Hey guys, in this particular video, I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the internal forces in these members of this truss assembly just here. Let's say that we've got an external force acting on point C of our truss downwards of 20 kilonewtons. Now I've shown in a previous video that because of this external force, we're going to have other external forces or reaction forces due from our supports just here. And it's going to look like something like this on our free body diagram. We're going to have our 20 kilonewton force down here on our free body diagram, but we're also going to have a 10 kilonewton force upwards at point E, and we're also going to have a 10 kilonewton force upwards at point A. I've shown how to do this in a previous previous video. Alright, now in this particular problem, I'm going to find out how to calculate the internal forces in bars AB, that's this one, and the internal force in bar AC. So have a shot at this yourself first. If you can't do it, that's okay, but it's really crucial you give it a go. Alright, well, in order to do this problem, we're going to have to rely on something called method of joints. And method of joints is really just the process of separating a particular joint from the rest of the truss and drawing a free body diagram on it. So let's do that. This is what our free body diagram looks like. We're going to have... We're going to have our truss just here, we're going to have cuts just here, and we're also going to have our external forces drawn on it, which is going to be 10 kilonewtons here, 10 kilonewtons here, but we're also going to have our internal forces showing as well, because we've made our cut section just here. So it's exposing the internal forces in AB and the internal forces in AC. So this is what AB looks like. This is the internal force AB, and I'll just call that AB, not too original. And I'll also call the internal force AC just AC as well. Notice two crucial things about this. I've drawn the forces parallel to the members, and I've also drawn the forces traveling away from the cut sections. Because I've drawn the forces traveling away, I've assumed their intention. I hope that meets your intuition. Just imagine getting a rope and pulling both sides. It's intention. Similar concept just here. It's intention. Likewise, the, the forces are parallel to the members because we're neglecting the mass of the truss. Otherwise, there would be an additional component in the, in the y direction. Alright, so before we can get started in the mathematics of this, we need to figure out what this angle is here. What is this angle? Well, it's, well, in order to figure that angle, we need to know that this triangle right here is actually an equilateral triangle, because all the lengths are equal. They're all one meter in this particular case. Which means that this angle right here is 60 degrees. So we can actually apply this formula quite easily now. We know the sum of forces is equal in the x direction is equal to zero. And we can also apply the formula that the sum of forces in the y direction is going to be equal to zero as well. Right? That's because we don't want our joint to have a net acceleration in any particular direction. So the acceleration should be equal to zero. Okay, so let's get into solving this. Um, we need to define y and x, so I'm going to call y to be positively upwards, and I'm going to call x to be positively to the right. Now let's get into solving this. What is the sum of forces in the x direction is equal to zero? Well, we've got two forces in the x direction. We've got AC in the positive x direction, so I'll just write AC just there. But we've also got our component of AB in the x direction. That's this component just here. That's that component. Right, this, I'm drawing the arrow of it now, that is the component of AB in the x direction. Now what is that? Fortunately we know the angle, so we know this is 60 degrees, meaning that we know the magnitude of the force is just going to be AB cosine 60. And we know it's to the right, so we're going to be adding it to AB cosine 60. Are there any other forces? Nope, so it's going to be equal to zero. That's one equation, but two unknowns. Not good, we need another equation. That's where this comes in handy. The sum of forces in the y direction is going to be equal to zero. Let's solve that. AC doesn't count, that's purely in the x direction. But our 10 kilonewton force counts, that's purely in the positive y direction. So we're going to have 10 kilonewtons, positive 10 kilonewtons, plus, plus our component of AB in the positive y direction, which is, which is just AB... AB sine 60 right here. So that's AB sine 60. Notice it's positive because it's facing upwards and that's going to be equal to zero. Okay, so that's that sorted. Let's now, now double check. We've got two equations and we've got two unknowns. Perfect. This is statically determinant so we can solve this problem. Let's solve this equation first because it's easier. AB 
is going to be equal to, once you take the 10 kilonewtons over to the other side, it's going to be minus 10 kilonewtons all over, to, all over sine 60, which when evaluated is 10 divided by sine 60, which amounts to minus 11.547 kilonewtons. Okay, that is AB. Don't let the negative sign distract you. I'm going to um, talk about the consequences of that later. But once we substitute that value back in here, we're left with AC plus AB, which we know we just calculated was minus 11.547 kilonewtons, times by cosine 60 is going to be equal to zero. Once we solve for this, we get AC onto one side of the equation meaning that AC must be equal to this times cosine 60, which is positive 5.7735 kilonewtons, right? Okay, we've almost finished. We know that AB is negative and we know AC is positive. What does that even mean? Well, if we go back up, we can see that we made the assumption that both of these forces were in tension. So, for AB, where we got a negative answer, that means that our force was actually always facing downwards, which means that it was actually in compression. AC, on the other hand, was always assumed to be in tension, and because it's positive, that means it's actually in tension. So let's, let's summarize our results below. That means we know AB, the internal force in member AB, is equal to 11.547 kilonewtons in compression, in compression, and AC, the force, the internal force in member AC is 5.7735 kilonewtons in tension. That is your answer. Okay, guys, I hope that makes sense. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about how to solve a problem similar to this using method of sections.